What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I just got done watching Nintendo's Switch press conference, and I wanted to give you my off-the-cuff thoughts of everything we saw. Well, let me just start by saying we got a ton of new information here. Nothing shocked me more than the fact that it turns out that this system is going to have much more motion controls than we earlier expected. The Switch controllers, called Joy-Cons, have sensors inside them that know when you're swinging them around, making it so you can play silly boxing games or aim your hands directly when competing in Splatoon. There's also some sort of scanner on the front of the device that detects what's going on in the room. For example, it can tell if you're making a pair of scissors with your hands. To be perfectly honest, I'm not really sure I like this. It just kind of seems like a pointless gimmick, a small step backwards. While fans have been begging them to focus more on the games, Nintendo decides to put out even weirder stuff that no one is really going to use. That being said, it's hard to deny that the Joy-Cons themselves are actually a pretty brilliant piece of design. If you want, it's possible to just hold it like a normal controller, but you can also take it apart and use the left and right sections individually. When I saw this at the beginning, I thought it was really strange, and yet, seeing it in action, it makes perfect sense. There are even tiny shoulder buttons when you take it apart, so you can still easily play games like Mario Kart and shoot shells. While all this was cool to watch, what really matters is what we'll actually be playing on the Nintendo Switch. They mentioned that there are currently over 80 projects in the works for the console, which sounds fantastic, especially when we saw a few of them today. For example, this is the new Mario game called Super Mario Odyssey. This aims to be a very different adventure for the plumber, taking him out of the Mushroom Kingdom and landing him in unique locations like New York City and some sort of weird looking alien planet. Judging by the tiny slice of gameplay we saw, this thing looks freaking awesome. Wall jumping, open world exploration, and some sort of new hat attack were all shown off along with Mario driving around on animals. It really could be exactly what fans have been hoping for, an amazing platformer that will be as legendary as Mario 64. What we saw next was Splatoon 2. Even though it's only been a few short years since the first one, we're already getting what appears to be a pretty interesting sequel. We're getting fresh styles of guns to shoot, squids to play as, and perhaps most importantly, crazy new arenas to blast each other in. I'm really excited to try this one for myself because it seems like the gameplay could be a lot faster due to the precise aiming of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Those who have been subscribed for a while know that I love RPGs and one of my favorites is Xenoblade Chronicles. Well, it seems that all my dreams are coming true because we're getting Xenoblade 2. In this preview, we didn't see much combat, but the universe seems expansive in this sequel. Our character sort of looks like someone out of Kingdom Hearts, but I guess I can ignore those dumb puffy pants as he has a super awesome sword. At the end of this fantastic trailer we see a huge dragon that makes me think it may be a major boss battle at some point, sticking with the theme of Xenoblade having some of the biggest and best fights. After this, they announced that there would be four Dragon Quest games all coming to the Switch. Personally, I'm not a diehard Dragon Quest fan, but this may be a chance for me to finally get into the series and I'm eager to give them a shot. What you're seeing here is probably the most confusing thing they showed, and yet also the most intriguing. Right now, it doesn't have a real title, but it's being called Project Octopath Traveler, which is the strangest name of something that appears to be rather epic. The sprite art style and the fact that it's being made by Square Enix themselves is enough to get me seriously hype to learn more details about it as soon as we can. The last game I really want to focus on is of course Zelda Breath of the Wild. We got such a great view of this, including new gameplay. The preview had wonderful voice acting, hints of a story that'll take place over 100 years and sweeping shots of the map. One thing I've been worried about for a bit is that we weren't seeing many different kinds of environments of Breath of the Wild, but they showed much more today. This slow, expansive scene of the entire world beneath Link nearly brought a tear to my eye. Here is the best news of all, though. Zelda Breath of the Wild will be a launch title for the Nintendo Switch on March 3rd. Yes, that's right, the Switch is coming out very, very soon. They also listed that the official price is going to be $299 US dollars, which means you need to pre-order this today, because I guarantee you they're going to make almost none of them. That price is slightly higher than I was hoping, but with that nice lineup of games, I absolutely have to get it. Thanks so much for watching gamers, these have been my random off the cuff thoughts after watching that insane conference. If there's anything I missed talking about that you loved, please tell me about it in the comments down below. There was just so much coolness I couldn't cover everything. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. It's almost 2am here, so if I sound a bit crazy right now, well, I'm blaming it on that.
thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.